Hello, friends, and welcome to the sixth episode of The Squad Pod. Joining me this week, we have Washburn135, the White Claw Wizard. Sup? Sup, dudes? Sup? Also joining me this week, we have the man from Lake Tahoe, Snowbike Mike. How you doing, Snowbike? What up, y'all? I got no camera today, man, I, because I just feel like I don't look good. <laughs> I don't look as good as Washburn does, so mm-hmm. I'm going to pull the Kevin, and I'm going to hide my handsome face until next week. All right, sounds good. And finally, rounding out the squad this week, a smaller squad, a shorter pod, Kevin Asex. I thought you were calling me a shorter pod. Are you <laughs> calling me short right now? <laughs> no, I am not. You're 6'8". We all know it. 6'8", 225. Okay. I'm using the new mic, so we'll see what linebacker. Okay, okay. I like I like the new mic. Oh, I'm Maddox Jr., by the way, in case I forgot that part, which apparently I did. <laughs> uh, this week we are talking about Realm Royale as our main topic of the show. Before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit about some party games we've been playing. Snowbike Mike, how did you like the Pummel Party? Heck yeah. Well, I got pummeled in the Pummel Party. Let's preference that and let's start it off with that. But man, oh man, what a great week we had playing some party games. Over on all of our live streams, twitch.tv slash washburn135, twitch.tv slash maddock jr, twitch.tv slash kevin asex, and twitch.tv slash snowbike mike. But really, I saw Courage JD a while back play this game called Pummel Party, and I absolutely fell in love. It looks like an adult version of Mario Party. So I forced all of my friends, these guys here on the squad, to download it with me on Steam. And man, was I pleasantly surprised at how much fun this game was it was just pure shenanigans it was mario party cranked up to 11 adult style and it was just non-stop laughter and good time so i am really happy that we checked it out i i want to say pummel party was an absolute blast in my mind and I, i'm excited to just kind of talk about it and tell the viewers what it was really all about and i heard a word on the street is that you are a dominant force to be reckoned with in the pummel party is that correct uh yeah i did i I did the pummeling <laughs> no oh. did. bull crap hold on i know you're good everyone was pummeling me even though i was getting first no no nobody was touching you Watchbird. so right? kevin this is what happens when we play a lot of different games and you're the best at all of them exactly. yeah, but i'm not though that's the thing you guys just assume i'm like i'm just doing my thing <laughs> right so it, that's the mentality of the squad, though. The mentality of the squad is Kevin is the best. Kevin's right? the best. Because Kevin carries. Kevin is the carry. Yep. And so when Kevin gets up near the top of the leaderboard in a game like Pummel Party, which is, like Mike said, an adult-themed Mario Party, right. people people are going to target him. Yep. Oh, and yeah. That, yeah. And that, that means that I can sort of quietly slip into that top spot, right? Um. But yeah, I had a ton of fun with this game. I had a ton of fun. Like the way that the combat works on the on the board, you know, like outside of mini games, how you can sort of just attack each other and get all these different items to go after the people, you know, you're playing against all around the board because the range on some of these items is huge. Like the wrecking ball, you know, you can just target anyone uh, in the way that everybody while you're on the board has health. And if you die, you go to the graveyard. It's sort of like going to jail in Monopoly. Um, it's it's a whole lot of fun, and the mini games themselves I had a blast with too. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that we go back into. Um, and the fact that you can have eight players is is also really cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, before... playing. Say one time, Washburn. Uh, uh, how many not... did you guys have playing? We had eight, eight. people playing. Yeah. Oh, nice! You got a bunch yeah. of people from the uh, mm-hmm. stream. Yep. Nice. So to preference it before we, we talk about all the fun times that we had, this is just like Mario Party. If you haven't played Mario Party, imagine a top-down board game style game where you and your friends travel around the board. And the goal is to, in this case, get chalices is what you want to get with keys that you earn from the maps and from mini games. And as you travel around the board, shenanigans can happen on the board, which is much different actually than Mario Party. Like Washburn said, it was really cool to be on the board with health and have items where you can attack others or pieces of the map might go underwater and you would be damaged. And if you die, you get put to a different part part of the map. You lose a bunch of your keys, which is really fun. But the end all be all goal is to win these mini challenges in between each and every round, earn keys, and then buy the chest that has the chalice in it 
at the end of the game to win it all. And it was really cool to see eight players in here. The look of it looks like humans fall flat and gang beasts where everybody's kind of that like weird, gummy, floppy kind of character, but they all do just fun stuff with their weird costumes. And the mini games are a plus like mm. Washburn said, the mini games are very similar to Mario party and how much fun they are. But I actually like the mini games that they had a lot here. I thought they did a great job recreating and finding that love that you have for a game like Mario Party and creating it in their own space. Like we said, kind of more of a adult themed. You probably wouldn't let your kids play this, I don't think. Right. There's I mean, there's that one mini game, for instance, where it just goes to an over the shoulder third person shooter. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, that it, was it cool. put eight people in this That's tiny awesome. little bar and it goes to this over the shoulder third person shooter. It spawns a bunch of shotguns around the, you know, this tiny little barn, but each shotgun only has one shot. So it's a race to the shotgun. So you have eight people in this mad scramble to be the first one to the gun. First one to the gun turns and burns because there's eight people all around him trying to get to that gun. And it's just mayhem. It's like it was a ton of fun. Yeah, really cool, really different uh, mini games. Like he said, like. All of a sudden, we were third person shooting each other. Then all of a sudden, we were playing like um, batter up or something like that, where mm -hmm. you know trash trash would fall down and we try to hit the trash outside of the junkyard. I thought that was pretty cute and fun. The snake game was cool. There was a Frogger type mini game where you <laughs> ran across the uh, traffic area to go rob a bank, but you could grab more. So the incentive was you could either run quickly with just minimal items in your hand or you could take more out of the bank, more cash and gold, but you'd be heavier and the cars were coming at you even faster. And I thought that made for some fun shenanigans. Kevin, what did you think of some of the cool mini games? I liked them. They were fun. Uh, I wasn't really good at them, so that's why I was surprised you guys were uh, pummeling me. I wasn't winning any of these winning games. Just saying. <laughs> it was always Washburn, and you guys were still gang up on me, but they're like, I don't know. They're kind of, it feels loose when you play them. I, I don't think they're like, they don't feel like tight enough that you can like figure out the controls right away. Like, like the shotgun ones, like you, everyone felt like loose when you walked around. Like I would like run past a shotgun and I wouldn't like, I guess pick it up for some reason. So I had to like run back to it. it felt weird when we played these mini games. Some of them were simple, like the, what was it? Like the avalanche, but it was like cars coming down the hill. Yeah. That one was fun. That one felt like... Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that one's easier to, like, maintain and play because, I mean, you just had to dodge and jump around the cars. But uh, other than that, I I like some of them. I can't remember if any other ones were, like, weird. That I didn't really... Oh, the baseball one. I didn't get that one. That one was the, tough. Like, Chris Anka was telling us you have to hit it at the circle when it drops at the circle, but I, I kept doing it and nothing would happen, so... I don't know, like, something's wrong with, like, the latency. Like, people are delayed a bit or what's going on. But, yeah, it felt off when we played that one for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on, like, the movement and just the feel. It, like I said, it reminds me of Gang Beasts or Human Fall Flat with, like, the gummy characters. But also, like, the kind of, like, wobbly and, like, you're not in full control movement. That's definitely what it reminded me of. And for me, I only won one mini game, And that's just the memory one because I really like the memory type games which is where you had to memorize the track across the big pit of death oh, yeah. and you had to follow it. And it would like, it would show you a little bit, then it would pull it back and it would go invisible. Then it would show you a little bit. And like, of course I love the memory games. Like I said, so my favorite part was trying to navigate that and follow that, which was really fun. But I mean, all in all, this was a really fun experience to play pummel party with my friends. I loved the party type gameplay and I really enjoyed the mini games. Like I'm excited to go back and either do just a mini game stream or play another 10 to 20 round game again, like 20 rounds. Yeah. It lasted long, but like the moments we shared the laughter and it's just like Mario party. We're like, all of a sudden you want to destroy the person up top. It's Washburn. It's Kevin. It's Chris Anka. Who's ever in that top three position. And you're below that. Your goal is to try to destroy them. And their goal is try to plead to you, not for you to hit them, to hit somebody else. And I love that scenario of pitting your friends against each other. Usually friendships die when that happens, but I'll tell you what, hey, hey, that's, now. that's the best moment because you get to yell at each other. You get mad, you get frustrated. And man, oh man, what a great time that was.
yeah, it's magic when like somebody pulls up a wrecking ball and then all of a sudden there are seven other voices playing saying play go to go to this guy, go to this guy, don't go to me, go to this guy, and you've got just seven voices just begging <laughs> not not to get hit by this wrecking ball. And that like that's the magic of of this style of game. The same thing with Mario Party. It's like when you get like a steel item in Mario Party, you know, you've you've got three other voices trying to convince you to target somebody else. And it's it's really fun. It's it, I had a ton of fun with this. Mm-hmm. What I'm hearing is after our experience with this game and the next game we're talking about, Move or Die, we should all be targeting Washburn and not Kevin or Snowbike Mike. For the <laughs> oh, I should be the last person you target because I absolutely sucked at Pummel Part. I mean, like I took dead last. They locked me in a cage at the end. Is what happened to me at the end of it. So yeah, <laughs> I got embarrassed there. But as we move into our next game that we've played this week is right. Move or die is a ton of fun. And Maddox, you got to play that with us. So I'll let you take the lead on this, but man, oh man, pummel party must check out. We all laughed and had a good time. And another party game up on deck. It was a perfect week of party games for us. Yeah, let me know what, what this game was. I didn't, I didn't get to play at all. So I don't know what happened. Uh, move or die is like a, it's got like, a, it's just mini game after mini game. Yeah. But the interesting portion of this game is Twitch integration. And people could type in Snowbike Mike's chat and vote on modifiers to the games and then vote on which games we are going to play. So it would pop up on the screen. It would be like, type the games you want to see. And it would pull and it would just take the top five or six, I think. And then like there's some that are always there that are kind of weird just for like Twitch interaction. Um, Like the one where you're falling down and you just have to like hope that people choose your color Mm -hmm. to type in the chat. Um, and, uh, so the modifiers that they could vote on were like, there was one called not safe for work and it just blurred out your character. So you couldn't really see what you were doing. There was another one where it made the whole screen black and there was just like a little bit of light around you. Um, I can't remember any of the other really good Uncomfortably ones. Uncomfortably but... close where it zooms in on your character. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was and, uh... and the one where we stuck together, the Velcro one, the that Velcro. one was great. I love that one. Um, and it's a lot. Of, so if you, the premise, Kevin, is that if you're not moving, you're losing health and by not, and you have to have your feet on the ground while you're moving. So when you're jumping, you're losing health. So that definitely plays into some of the mini games. And if you're not paying attention, some of the mini games, like I think there was a low gravity scenario that we ran into and people died because they were just in the air for too long. So that's kind of the basis of that game. The mini games are wild. I guess I need to look at it because I don't know. Yeah, I don't. You're saying mini games, but I don't like. I want to know what these mini games are. Like, is it kind of like Pummel Party type of mini games, or what is it? Yeah, it, it's similar to Pummel Party type mini games. A little bit uh, smaller and more. Like 2D. Yeah, it's refined. It, it, it's 2D. It's very fast. Is right. So one mini game, for example, is called Hoops, Kevin. There's one ball, there's one hoop in the center, and your goal as simple is to try to get the ball in the hoop while everybody else jumps all over the ball and gets it out of your hands. Another mini game is the Twitch chat votes on who survives. So we're on a moving lever that's going down into the death zone, and your goal is to plea the Twitch chat to vote on your color that will then pop you up higher and keep you above that death zone. Another one mm-hmm. is called Chainsaw Backstab, back, backstab which is... You have one chainsaw and everybody else has a chainsaw. And if you collide with each other in the front where you go chainsaw to chainsaw, you fall back about five feet, get pushed back. If you do it again, your chainsaws will fly out of your hands and go on the opposite side of the map, leaving you exposed with no chainsaw. So your goal is either to catch somebody not looking at you and stab them in the back or to make them lose their chainsaw so they're exposed and left out. You quickly grab a chainsaw and cut them down. But it's a very fast mini game centric mm. Uh, type of video game here and like maddox said the premise is like 30 seconds i feel like for the most part 30 to 60 seconds at the most right there you put a instead of rounds you actually put a timer on how long you want the game to go for and so we usually put it at 15 minutes and the goal was just first person to get to 75 wins and it's really fun of like they're just very fast phonetic mini games that you can have a quick time in get in get out while laughing with the twitch chat that was my favorite thing about it 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 was one of those games where we were we were coming off a tough night of war zone right yep. and and we said let's just <laughs> let's get into something that we can just jump right into and this game was perfect for that you get in the twitch chat votes on 
six or seven mini games, and then you're just running the gauntlet. You know what I mean? They're all pretty yeah. good. Did you yeah, have, they're, and, all, they're all very good. Did you have every Tanana, mini game is good. Did you have a turn on a Twitch integration, or was it just automatic? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, it, it is in the settings. You can turn it on or turn it off. I knew that coming into it because I've played it many times before. Mm. So I knew this would be a perfect moment to get the Twitch chat involved. And that's what it's there for, right? It's like the Twitch chat votes on literally everything in the game, which is very cool. And uh, there's even mini games that's around them. Like I said, there's the one where you plead to get them up in the air. There's one where they'll type in a keyword and it will shoot off a laser mm -hmm. in a certain area of the map and you can die. There's uh, a moment where they can type in just literally one letter into the Twitch chat, and that will put up bombs in the certain parts of the map. So it's really cool. Of The Twitch integration is the selling point of this game, but the fun, fast, phonetic uh, mini games are also the biggest selling point of this game because they're just so good. Yeah, it, it's like a you almost can't breathe. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's not it's not so fast that it's the the fact that not being able to breathe is bad. Does that make sense? Like you're you're completely locked in from the start of the game to the end of the game because as soon as a mini game ends, you're going to the next one. Yep. And exactly. each like ten like y'all are saying, yeah, each mini game is what thirty seconds, and it's just bam, 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 game, game, game. There's no there's no pummel party or Mario party scenario where you're on a board where you have to wait. You're always yep. playing. Mm -hmm. And like Maddox was saying, you know, having to have your feet on the ground to survive and move. There were several times where. We were playing a mini game and my guy would just vanish and I would die and I'd just be like, what happened? I don't I don't remember getting hit by anything. And then I'd be like, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't moving. moving. Yeah, I wasn't moving enough. And so like mm -hmm. that, that little factor adds into the the fast feeling, the fast frenetic feeling of it, because you're always moving. You're always playing. The game is forcing you to keep going. I had a I had a lot of fun with this. It's only a four player, right? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. At first, I yeah. was not a big fan, and then as as I got the hang of some of the mini games, I like was kind of figuring out. It be, I became a big fan after that. It took a little time though. Yeah, you, definitely. Go, Kevin. Uh, no, so do you guys think it'd be, it'd be better if it was more than four players, or do you think four players is a sweet spot, or less players? Four players is a sweet spot. Four, four players, players is a pretty sweet is spot. A hundred percent, the sweet spot is right. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, the screen would be too crowded. Because it's like a fixed. Like, if you had, like, part of a Mario level, essentially, and it didn't move the screen, so you're just, like, jumping around. Mm. Yeah, if they, if they upped it to eight, they would have to double the size of these little Everything. maps that you're playing yeah. on. Yeah. And the, um, the colors. So, so there's, like, four distinct colors right now. So you, mm. you don't get confused about which character is yours. We yep. did accidentally switch colors for the last round, and JD and I, I think, were very confused for the first couple of rounds because he was pink <laughs> and I was yellow, and then I was yellow and he was pink. Yeah, it's really cool, too. They have some great character customizations as well where you get to pick mm. and choose your character, and as you level up, you level up very fast as well, but you get new cool characters, right? So there was a Rick and Morty skin. You could be Rick. You could be Morty. You could be uh, an X-Ray type of blob character they're like they're like these little small Penguin. squishy yeah you know they can be animals and stuff i have a pug on my account there's just like the really fun unique characters as well to make you say like oh i'm happy that i have this or like oh how did you get that cool biker guy washburn and he's like oh, i just unlocked the you know the chest that i leveled up with and it's like oh i hope i get that one you know so i definitely like the characters in move or die and how i can you know get a new character and it might be a cool skin to show off to the twitch chat for sure you and the also, twitch chat's the biggest point yeah and you also earn in-game coins when you when you actually play the game which you can then go into the in-game shop and buy character skins or mini games even oh really which you can buy yeah. mini games mm -hmm. there are a lot of like mini games in the shop that you can unlock and I know Mike was like level 60 plus, so he had unlocked yep. most of the stuff by this point, which was oh, good. nice. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was cool. You can earn them in, in the little boxes or you can just go buy them with your with the you know, experience that you earned in the game. So what do you guys think? What do you guys like better? At least the two people will play both Bumble yeah. Party or Move or Die. Wow, that's a tough one right there. I think yeah, they're I think they're very unique and different. They're very unique and different. I think if I wanted to sit down and have a nice 
fun evening with the guys, I would go for Pummel Party because I like that A player. I like the board. I think it is fun and long, but I love the idea of four players, Twitch chat integration, getting them involved. The mini games are so fast and you could rotate people in and out. Like we could play one game and then go grab three new kids and play another game. And you, you wouldn't feel like you missed out on the whole night. We're like, as Pummel Party, that took about, what, Washburn, about an hour to two, two hours, hours for the 20 turns. So, like, mm -hmm. if you weren't part of that original eight, you would miss out for sure. So, mm -hmm. I, I think there's a little bit of give and take on both of them. I think they're both terrific party games that I actually love. I wouldn't put one or the other. I think they're both different and unique and a lot of fun. I think, that for me, the question is, which one do you see yourself going back to more? And I That's think the answer there. to that question is move or die. I, nice Be, call. That's because like I, because like I said, you know, this is a game that you can just jump in. There's no BS with this. Well, it's easy There's to get no, people for it too. I mean, you just have to get three other people. Yeah. Like, and you fill it's the something board. that's that you're not setting up rules. You know what I mean? You're not sitting there. Are you going to play 10 turns, 20 turns? What map are we going to play on? There's none of that. You, you get four people and you press go and you're off to the races. It, it, this is just a game that you can jump into. It only takes about 10 to 15 minutes for a round. And so you can cycle people in and out. I think move or die for me is probably my choice out of these two games. Mm -hmm. right. Sounds fun. I want to play it one day. We'll you got to play it one day. You best believe it. When we're burnt out on Warzone one night, when we're not doing so well, <laughs> I'm sure we'll jump right back into it that really game. Is, like, it really is the perfect game for that. It's just yeah. like, oh, we're getting stomped right now in the war zone. We're feeling frustrated. You know, let's let's end this. Let's end a stream or let's end a session with a couple of rounds of move or die. That's a perfect oh. way of putting it. It's right. And how fast it is to set it up and go. Yeah, that's it's the perfect way of putting it is right. All right. And now we have our battle royale of the week. This week we played. Realm Royale, which is a free to play third person shooter. Um. This game features multiple character classes with unique abilities and an interesting leveling system. It's a spin-off of the hero shooter Paladins Champions of the Realm, which originated as a game mode known as Paladins Battleground. Oh, that's what it the was. game Yeah, yeah. The game was released in uh, on open console on both consoles, open beta on both consoles on May 24th, 2019, and it is crossplay with the Xbox, Switch, and PC. So, before we get into the specifics, what do we think, big picture, of this Battle Royale for the week? Uh, so nobody, go, go watch for it. <laughs> so, like, full disclosure for me, I've, I, didn't, I didn't play as much as I probably should have, so I, I don't have a ton to say. Um, I think it's, it's another Battle Royale. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, okay. And uh, there, it's a lot of cool ideas. Like, I, I like the Forge. I like uh, disenchanting things that you see on the ground to earn money to then go back and spend in this forge where you can get epic or legendary weapons. Um, I like the fact that there are different character classes with different buffs and abilities. Um, and the fact that some of those buffs and abilities are really fun. Uh, then it made me want to play Guild Wars. You know what I mean? Like this game made me want to play like Guild Wars or World of Warcraft or some high fantasy RPG. Cause that's kind of what it feels like. Like I know Mike, you said this a bunch of times it's it. It feels like a world of Warcraft battle Royale almost. Right. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree with what Washburn's saying and I would actually take it up a notch and I would say, this is something I really enjoyed playing and I would actually be interested in playing it more after our initial week long checkout of this game, because personally I had fun with this. Like we were coming off a week of PUBG into this and like i like this game i had fun with this to the point where like if the guys were ever like hey mike let's play some more realm royale i'd be like i'd do that again for a night sure mm -hmm. we got beat down sometimes but like there are some really cool mechanics in this game like washburn just brought up and we're gonna deep dive into and the look feels like it's fortnite and world of warcraft came together to create a battle royale and it is everything it's like it's like when you watch that South Park episode of World of Warcraft and the first instinct is like, I want to play World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. This is it now. It's like there's a Warcraft battle royale. Sure, it's not actually a Warcraft battle royale, but like this is the, the feeling I get when I see it. And I, I liked it a lot. I actually am surprisingly high on this game right now. 
as well. I had a, a great time. I thought it was a lot of fun. And while we did get run over a few times, today Washburn, Kevin, and a random managed to get a win. And uh, during that game, I had like a great time. Um, it was interesting because like coming in, not knowing anything about this game, I thought it was more magic based. And it turns out there are a lot of guns in this game. Yeah. There are arrows, there are crossbows, there's uh, mage staffs. casty staffs, yeah. staffs yeah. Yeah. and mm-hmm. throwing hammers, like swords Thor, and hammers, yep. And uh-huh. swords, hammers but awesome. uh, I didn't realize that there was also just gunplay. So it's like a third person shooter to a T. I think okay. I have more fun with this game than I do with Fortnite, personally. Because there's no building, and the building is what really gets to me sometimes in Fortnite. I can 100% um, get behind I'm that with you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it, I... it took like 10 minutes, two games, three games to feel like, okay, I kind of know what's going on and what I should do to mm-hmm. maximize the amount of coins I'm earning and which weapons I should kind of use. Yeah, to speak to that win that we got earlier, Matt, like you were saying, um, we were kitted right we were so yeah. kitted we we and i think that's a testament to how using all the features that the game gives you can enhance that experience because sure. we were sitting at that forge i was crafting i was playing as a mage i was crafting a mage weapon mage abilities mage movement kevin was a i think kevin was a warrior and he was like throwing hammers and hammers. we were doing all this yeah we were doing all this crazy stuff that was radically different than what we're used to in a battle royale and came out with that victory yeah it was a lot of fun yeah i really enjoyed it i can't wait to let's let's just deep dive into it right now so it is in a fantasy setting and i want to just touch on let's touch on the mechanics of the guns the abilities and the different pickups because like you said like this actually coming off a week where we also checked out hyperscape and i gave hyperscape praise of like how cool the overwatch style abilities were but like each one was just grabbable and you could put on any one of them i liked that this game had unique abilities for the classes but at the same time like there was multiple of them they were easy to pick up and they just automatically got auto binded onto the spots they were supposed to be because there's a a pass there's three there's passive traits there's the defensive and the offensive Mm -hmm. for each class and there's like three or four you could choose from and they go up in level two similar to hyperscape but you don't kind of like work and get multiple of them you just find like a higher level one right so it goes like gray green purple gold on the scales and i actually like the abilities i think it's a really cool idea to have these abilities in place and i enjoyed that i thought that was really different and cool like i said we're coming hot off of PUBG. this is far less than a tactical you know, battle royale shooter. This is like, let's have some fun in this fantasy world. Let's give you a unique character you can play as. And each one has these awesome abilities. And I, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was awesome. And how fast they were onto the key bindings really helped out as well. Sure. Yeah, definitely. It's like every class has like a suggested set of powers and there's uh, buffs that your character earns as they level up that will help those. So, I was playing the hunter and the there's like an arrow move that's uh the offensive one and the forward roll that's the uh movement perk and those two uh work a little bit better with my class and are a little bit more powerful and then as I level up you get like more things that will make that cooldown for that specific trait like a little bit faster so it was it was definitely interesting to see how that progressed and then like when you die, you turn into a chicken. I feel like that needs to be mentioned. I feel like that's an important part of this game. And the song that it plays when you turn into a chicken is a banger. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the it's chicken's an interesting banger. mechanic, is right. I mean, coming off of what we've been playing lately, where it's like once you get downed, you gotta pick each other up. Like now you're just a chicken running for your life for 20 seconds is super different, very unique. I haven't seen anybody ever kind of do that style and like you feel helpless and you're like, oh my God, somebody like do something or get me away from these people as I run in circles, praying to God that you don't kill me. And so I thought, I thought the chicken mechanic was really cute and fun. 
Yeah, the chicken mechanic is also so like if you last long enough, you just come back to life. Yep. And then if you get killed, you can still and one of your teammates gets away, they can still buy you back at the forge with coins and you'll respawn in 30 to 40 seconds, I think. With all your guns still, which is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Kevin, what did you think of the chickens and like that kind of knockdown mechanic that you've seen before in the battle royales? When I f oh, when I first saw the chicken, I was like, they're dead, they're dead after that, right? They're not coming back. But apparently, yeah, you can come back from being a chicken. It's it's so funny <laughs> seeing them run run around and try to get away from people <laughs> with their little flags and stuff. But it's an interesting mechanic. I like that. I don't know. You pick your friend up if they're a chicken. You or... cannot pick anybody up because you just have That's to defend like them. Last, yeah, yeah. You just uh, have to survive. I want. It would have been cool if you can just pick up your friend who's a chicken and just toss him somewhere so you can just like. Oh, you mean like pick him up like Fortnite, like where you you yeat people? Is that, what you're saying? Yeah, that not like pick like, up, pick up. Well, both, pretty much. Oh, both okay, okay. Yeah, I was wondering if you can do either one because that <laughs> that'd be pretty cool if you could just you know eat him out of there. <laughs> As a chicken, you have two things that you can do. You have, um, you can peck. So I think you can actually do damage as a chicken. And then that was the left mouse button, and the right mouse button was, uh, it, like, did a little zoom thing. Like a dash, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. To try and get away. That was interesting when I saw that. Yeah, like, I'm I'm curious how they came up with that. I guess maybe the other, like, what was it, Paladins had something similar? But I, I, I like it. It's funny, yeah, because I like the song that plays for it, too. <laughs> And then what was the yeah, other thing you asked? I don't know what the other thing was. Oh, no, just what you thought of that. Yeah, like I said, I thought I think it's super cool. I think it's different, and that that's a fun way to put a little twist on your battle royale, right? Of like, oh, no, your team's not going to run over to you and pick you back up. No, that's not how this works. It's like you're running for your life, and you hope to God they're not thirsting you, which I thought was a fun time for sure. I want to touch on the Forge, because that that's something mm. totally different, right? Like that that's a really cool one of, Here's the opportunity. There's multiple forges all the way around the maps, and it's it's almost kind of like the buy loot drops stations. in Apex, buy uh, stations yeah. like Call of Duty or in PUBG with the you know the the loot drop as well, where it's like these are going to be high traffic zones because everybody's going to want to be grabbing new gear. Everybody's kind of like Washburn said, right? You can disenchant any item that you see that you can pull out of a chest or on the ground, right? So these disenchantments then turn into gold, which then are you know. A, a currency you can spend at the forge, right? So you're disenchanting things. You're killing people for more gold. They have loot goblins around the map. And then you go to the forge where it has a giant list of like, hey, you can buy your character's ultimate ability, the passive ability, the defensive ability. You can buy the ultimate weapons if you want. You can buy shields. You can buy health. And now like, or you could buy the revive as well. And now you're like, okay, how much do I got? I got 70. Let's go back to the forge. Oh, snap, there's like five people here. Everything takes like 20 seconds, no matter what, to be built. So you have to wait around at it, too. I think that's really cool as well. The important thing to mention here is that every single loot chest is unique to a person. So I can go and loot it. Washburn can go and loot it. Kevin can go and loot it. And then Mike can go and loot it. And so when you're disenchanting things, you don't feel bad. You're not mm. like, oh, by the way, I uh, destroyed that gun you might want over there. Yeah. Because they're going to open up the chest and they're going to get some items as well. I think that's huge. And I think it's something that the game gives you to keep you moving. You know what I mean? As a sure. squad. Yeah. Because you're, you're not you're not sitting there debating and, and arguing over who's going to get what. Because everybody gets everything. Yeah. Because yeah, you know, the first area you go to, no matter what, you, yeah, you will have something. So, yeah, it keeps on going and going no matter what. Just, you know, yeah, I, you, I like that cool. That was cool. Yeah. cool. Coolest part of the game is the chest system for me of like. How cool is that is that everybody can get a piece of that chest? Like, we don't really get to see that that much, but I absolutely loved that. I thought that was uh, super unique. I don't think I've ever seen it before in a battle royale where it's like, now you don't feel bad about opening up a chest or you don't feel like you're missing out because everybody else is getting gear. It's like, oh, no, like, everybody has their own chest and every item is unique to them. They can disenchant it. Or if you leave it on the ground for X amount of time, Washburn can come up behind me and grab those items or disenchant them himself if he wants. Mm -hmm. I think it's super dope. Yeah, it's something that this game needs because the importance of the shards in the, I get I think they're called shards actually, yeah. not gold. Um, especially in squads when you know when you've got 
a team composition. One guy's a maze, one guy's a hunter, assassin, warrior, or whatever. Um, the that the importance of those shards when you hit the forge to get the warrior weapon or the assassin weapon or the mage weapon, these weapons that certain characters do more damage with, it can't be understated. Like you, it's something that you have to do if you want to be competitive, especially in the end game. So, so people, everybody getting a piece of that chest is, it's a really smart call. The other thing I wanted to touch on was the movement. Um, so to get around the map, there are two different ways to accelerate yourself. Um, we got the trebuchets, which you can hop in and you can launch yourself like a decent amount of the way across the map, I would say. And then the other is you have a mount that you can just... Like, I, I had it bound to four, I think. So I just press four, and one, two seconds later, that you're hopped on your horse, and you're riding along a little bit faster. Yeah, I think that's super dope. I love the mounts, and that I think that's where I get into the World of Warcraft thing of, like, it feels so much like that, because I don't see mounts that often in video games, especially in the Battle Royale genre. But, like, that is awesome, just to call in your mount and start moving, right? Because there is, I don't believe there is a run button. You're just constantly running no. at the same pace in this game. So, like, the mount is crucial, and it's not like your mount goes away ever. It's like you just call it in, you jump on it, you start out running the circle or go to your next destination, jump off. It's there when you need it. I think that's a great way to be like, hey, we're unique. Hey, we're a little bit different. You're still moving fast enough around the map because the map is pretty big as well, but the mounts are dope. And we'll talk about, you know, cosmetics. We'll talk about in-game purchases and stuff. But, like, we're we're talking about mounts we're talking about different classes and characters we're talking about chickens here like if you're really looking outside the big picture here you're looking at a lot of things that microtransactions become involved in and lead to a lot of cool character customization as well there's a velociraptor i believe that you can ride yep yeah. didn't we see Definitely that at velociraptor <laughs> uh-huh 100 yeah. percent. there's a unicorn and stuff what, that you really? can ride oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah it's I not just horses that. I didn't see that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. saw a dude riding like a griffin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Let's play that game today, dude. I want to play it now. Play it now. Well, from what did you think of the mounts and the trebuchets? Uh, I think the mount, the mount is cool. It reminded me of a game that nobody played called Bleeding Edge. Uh, where, oh, where man, I didn't think of that. Oh, where you we can press it. for... So I'm on controller because, you know, yep. that's just who controller I am. Controller to yep. Even on PC, I'm on player controller. Uh, so for me, it was bound to a D-pad button, which was the same D-pad button to mount in Bleeding Edge. Um, and, and just having that ability that's always there, you know what I mean, is something necessary, especially in a game without a sprint. Um, so it, it really helped us cover, like in, in our win earlier, we were very far out from the, the zone. And we just mounted up and rode over there and that that ability is really cool it's a smart call and it, it yeah. does lend to that overall fantasy feel that world of warcraft feel and it was kind of and ring of elysium actually did a similar thing where you had a motorcycle or a bmx bike yep it's nice to have that thing that just all of a sudden you can just get across the map a little bit faster and you don't have to be in a certain spot at the map like in apex you don't have to go to the jump tower but there are also the trebuchets are basically jump towers so it's like Nice to have multiple ways to increase your speed across the map for sure. Agreed. Kevin, what'd you think of those? The like the mounts and the boys you can yeah. get around. Uh huh. Just kind of traversal itself. What'd you think of all the movement and stuff? They're cool, but man, I don't know how fast we go on them though. That's the thing. Because me and Manog, yeah. we were outside the circle, and that circle was just whizzing yeah. through it just passed by us like nothing and we're on mounts and we're like i don't think we're gonna make it even though we're on mounts so i don't know how uh, much it was going we... faster than us the whole time yeah so i don't know how much speed boost do we get from a uh, redding on the mount and then the... it's enough it's i mean it's some but it's not enough to outrun the first storm clearly yeah. and then well the thing too when you're on the mount you can't heal yourself so you have to choose to like get off the mount and heal or just, you know, maybe just walk it out and kind of run and kind of heal on the way there. I don't know. It's It was a weird thing. It, it's cool you can change, it, change your mount, um, what your mount looks like. But, yeah, I don't know. 
It's, okay. It's all right. I think for me, it's more of a tool to get from point A to point B in a shorter amount of time, not necessarily to outrun the circle. Yeah. Because we, when we were using them earlier, um, and I'll go back to this match because it's the only win I have in the game. You know, it's the <laughs> only like real full game I've played. Crown um, Royale. Yeah, we Crown were Royale. using them because there was about a minute left, right? Till the zone started closing and we were ready to go. We had looted the area we were in. And so we just mounted up and, and rode in towards the circle. And I, I do feel like for me, I've, I've never gotten caught outside the zone on one. But it did feel significantly faster than running on foot for me. 100%. Yeah, no, I mean, I, 100%. You're moving faster. It's almost like Fortnite, right? Where, like, in Call of Duty, we had cars. Uh, Fortnite really doesn't have the big redeploy system like Apex that you can, like, you know, you know, you got. But, like, it's like jumping when Fortnite used to have, like, the mini golf carts where you could jump in the golf cart and just drive faster is how I felt with that, as opposed to the running of Fortnite where. You're running and you don't feel like you're going as fast as you possibly could with some sort of mode of transportation instead. Re added the uh, jump pads into Fortnite though, so you can yeah. redeploy a little bit faster than previously. At the beginning of this, this new revamp, they didn't have anything that increased your mm -hmm. speed. Yeah. Let's talk about the map, dude, because the map is dope. Yeah, well, Kevin, yeah, you got map is, dope. Is, there, is there only one map? Yes. One map. One map. Yeah. How long is it's this? sort of when does this go come for out? It, it came out in 2019, so oh, a year on ago. console, on console, a year oh. and a half ago. And shout out, like shout out to that too. I was uh, when we did get that win. I was on Xbox. Yep. Uh, Matt yeah. and Kevin were on PC. I played Can't it, play on, it PC. on PS4 though. No, no, no crossplay between Sony and the, everybody, everybody else. else. Move. <laughs> Which move. Not the best. something. I, I will say you got I, I will always near and dear because I'm such a big Xbox guy and yeah, I got the second PC now, but like I am such a huge console guy that I will always give a lot of love and extra credit to these battle royales that do make it over to console. When you really look at it, right? We've always talked about PUBG being one of the first Fortnite coming over as well. You got to give them credit, but like very few of these kind of smaller offshoot battle royales ever finally make it to console so i'll always hold a special spot in my heart knowing that like a game like realm royale did finally make it to console allowing me more of a console player a chance to play this battle royale right because you see these games come out in early access in 2017 18 and they never quite make it to console and you're left there like watching other people play it going man i'm a battle royale guy i want to play that and so I'll always hold these kind of games near and dear to my heart that finally make it over. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just easier for one for streaming purposes to play on a console. Um, Cause I, you know, I don't have the streaming PC and the gaming PC, uh, but I just, it's, it's easier in terms of just booting it up. You know what I mean? I don't have to go to steam and, and go through this big library. I just click on the game on my dashboard and I'm ready to go. Um, so yeah, it's it's a big deal, and I, it's another thing about the console crossplay is that it keeps the matches full, yep. which is a problem we had in our yeah, release. Him, yeah, yep. um, being able to stuff those matches with a hundred players is huge, especially for this game, which I don't think has this massive player base. I could be wrong, but I'm I'm not assuming that um, Realm Royale just has this gigantic player base, but the fact that it's crossplay allows it to. One, get you in a match quickly, and two, make sure that match is populated, which is a big deal in a battle royale. Huge deal. Agreed. Touch on that map, Maddox. Talk to me about this map, because I think this map is freaking cool, bro. Mm -hmm. um, well, to touch on the amount of people in-game, <clears throat> we can't tell how many people are on the other consoles, but on Steam, there are 1,412 in-game right now, which isn't like a huge number by any means. It is more than ROE. And then if you add in the consoles, it's obviously going to be able to fill 100 people per match, which is nice. And they have solos, duos, and quads. So that is good, too. Yeah, the map was cool. It's uh, divided into little sections. There's the snowy section and the deserty section. And uh, like part of the deserty section had like a Western theme. And then I feel like some of the jungly area kind of had like a aztec type vibe to it with like aztec kind of temple vibes down in the bottom corner 
and then there's just like a few cities that just kind of feel pretty normal i mean the buildings don't have a great variety but um overall i think it keeps it interesting and there's um a lot of elevation change across the map in general which i think makes keeps it more interesting than uh you know a flatter map for sure yep. um i don't know did anyone else have any feelings on i thought it was cool for me it, it feels it may, it's what makes the game feel like world of warcraft yeah because the, the map is split up into three sections you've got your snowy area your desert area in your grassland area and if you go up into the snowy area all the architecture looks like it's built by dwarves yeah you know what i mean it yeah. looks like you're yeah. you're about to go in the iron forge you're in there and you're you're running around these dwarven villages you go over to the the badlands or the you know the the barren area yeah, yeah it looks like a or control uh, yeah some sort of horde area some sort of horde starting area and then you go to down to the grasslands it's like oh this is where like the humans or the elves live yeah and it, it just it contributes to that overall world of warcraft feel that fantasy feel i really yeah. like the map it, it's i like the variety of it um i like that in some instances it is vertical there's like a canyon in the desert area where you know you do have to look up um which is you know I'm a huge fan of that in games, verticality. Uh, but just the the variety of it really spoke to me. And the different architecture in the different regions um, I thought was really, really cool. Yeah, I 100% agree with Washburn. It feels like, hey, here's the dwarfs and the gnomes. Here is the barons with the orcs and the trolls and the goblins. Then I, I even feel like there's four technically. I feel like there is Stormwind with the humans. But then, like Maddox said, there's kind of like a jungly area. That would definitely remind you of like the night elf area. So I, I think that it feels mm -hmm. like it's four different distinct areas. And one of the cool parts is, is like there is a lot of buildings and you can jump out the windows, right? Like, let's not understate that as like, you're not trapped in there. You can jump through the windows, which is pretty cool as well. But the map itself, a lot of hills, a lot of mountains, a lot of traversal, very cool, very unique, a different vibe and leads to the fantasy feel. And I love the map. I think the map is cool. I like flying in on the Zeppelin type look. I think that's sweet as well and a little bit different than ROE when we just chose our spot, right? We haven't seen anybody do that yet, but we're back on the plane. We're back on the Zeppelin, which is fun. And I like the starting area is the Zeppelin, right? You just sit there instead of PUBG, we're in the pregame lobby and you're throwing an apple at my forehead. We're in Call of Duty where it's super loud and you're just constantly killing me. We're in Fortnite where you're building stuff like this is like you just sit in the Zeppelin and we'll get the match started in 20 seconds. Don't worry about it. I like that a lot as well. Yeah, I forgot about the fungal forest yep. area that, yeah. we, that we were playing in with these these sort of hang bridges Giant and mushrooms. these big old mushrooms and how vertical that area was. Um, that was like the first night we played. And yeah, I yeah. totally forgot about how vertical and, you know, in depth that area was with those bridges going across those trees. And how do you get up to the forge there? Because there's all these stairs. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. So... Before we summarize our thoughts on this lovely battle royale, does anyone have any negatives that they like? feel like, oh man, this game really missed on anything in particular? Or is it just like, uh, it like nails a few aspects and then like doesn't really miss on any? I talk about like the beginning of the game, like it gets like kind of laggy and stuttery for some reason. Oh yeah. You're right. I forgot about that. talk about that, Kevin. Yeah, bring up your experience. With that, that. Is the, that is the negative for sure. Just, what's up with that? <laughs> That's it. Because I'm like, I don't get, is it because yeah. there's too many people on the map or too many people playing? It's, I don't uh, know. It's weird. Because it, it, it gets better once the game, later in, later in the later game, because there's like less people, I guess, too. Yep. So I don't, I don't know. It's weird. I don't, know, have you, I don't know if you guys experienced it without no, like, no lag or anything like that. On both PC we, and yeah. Xbox, I lagged. Every game it, and it almost, yeah, every single game, mm -hmm. it stuttered at the beginning. And it feels more like it's stuttering than lagging for some reason. I don't know. It's like almost more jarring than lag. Yeah. To a certain extent. What do you think uh, you contribute that to? Do you think that's because it has such a smaller player base that maybe it's matching us with kids, like not truly in our reads and it's really reaching? Do you think it's because it's a smaller studio and they don't have the giant servers like the games we're used to that we're playing right now? Like, what from somebody who's not a tech guy like what is leading to that situation do you think so high res is uh, let, let's not understate how big smite is 
Yeah, yeah. Yep, Smite yep. is massive. It's it's very popular. So I don't think it's a server issue. I do think what you said, Mike, about being matched with people from all over the world. That's probably the case because, like I said earlier, the we're getting in matches quick and matches are populated. And so the chances of that happening when you're locked into a specific region are low. And I, I do think it's a case. It's just a case of we're playing with people from all around the world. I really do think that's what it is. Hmm. I think that might be right. Hopefully, fix any it. other negatives besides like server stutters. I mean, I think uh, you can chalk up like there's definitely. I wouldn't call it a learning curve, but like there's gonna yeah. you're gonna get punished. Right, because yeah. there is such a smaller player base and they're probably not you know, doing like system. in crazy skill based matchmaking. Like you're just going into any game they got. So like you are you gonna get right. punished most of the time. But at the same time, like this is fun. It's easy to learn. So I, I I'm not gonna discredit it for getting punished. That's of course us being new players and stuff. But mm -hmm. I would say if you're coming into this, like don't expect us to like have an easy experience right off the bat. You're gonna learn, you're gonna have fun, but like you are going to get slapped around. Like we said, we only got one win total. These guys did. And it, it was a, you know, a hard fought win there. So I, I think it, it's a little bit, it's just going to be tough on new players. I, think I didn't have any big, big complaints though. No yeah. Out, outside of the, the lag and the stutter. Um, it's a game that's built for keyboard and mouse. Like, and for me, I, I don't vibe with that. You know what I mean? I'm a controller player through and through always will be. And just no aim assist for me sucks, but I get it. You know what I mean? Um, but outside of those and one of those being a, a nitpick and a, and a very personal thing, um, it's just meh. You know what I mean? It's, it's just another battle royale. It's a game that exists. And, and while it's, it is fun and it's radically different, it it's doesn't have that same, I guess Mike would say je ne sais quoi yeah. of, of a Call of Duty or an Apex. It doesn't have that same just massive production value, that quality value. Mm. Mm. Just level up individually. And it looks like there is a ranking system of some sort. I doubt that it's contributing to how we're being match made, though, with the, I think, in general, low player base. But I guess there's not really a way to test that. And I, while you can level up and it does make a difference for your character, I do think that the differences it's making are mostly minor, I would say, and are not going to contribute to like a worse play, overall playing experience, which is good. Um, overall, I do agree with you. It is kind of like, oh, yeah, this is another battle royale. I had a lot of fun with it. I feel like there's like a few things that they could do to just like make it a little bit more different than other battle royales. And the fact that there's like, oh, a burst rifle, an automatic rifle, an SMG, a pistol, kind of takes away from what it could be, I think, with the more magical, mythical type weapons. That's interesting, because I actually still feel high on this game. I, You know, Washburn and Maddock are bringing up some really good points. But for me, I actually, I liked this. I had a good time oh, with this. Though. I would play, yeah, I think everybody will tell you they had a good time, right? Yeah, I but think in all honesty. The Tell formula me. is there. Yeah, like the formula is there. Everything about it from a foundational standpoint is extremely rock solid. If they were to make a Realm Royale 2 and give it that massive, you know, that massive production leap, that quality leap, where we're now looking, the, you know, at competing with a Call of Duty or an Apex, this, this, game, could, this game could crush it. You know what I mean? Like, because the idea of a high fantasy RPG in a Warcraft like world is just killer. It's a killer idea. And I think they do execute on it. Um, but it's, it's just, it, it's not there. It's not quite there. Yeah. I, I agree with all that. My final thoughts would be like, it's not breaking the big three, but if I had friends come to me and be like, Hey, like what other cool battle Royales are there to check out besides the big three, this would probably be up towards the, near top of the list of like hey here's some other ones to check out because this was fun this was different this was unique and it did run well with a, a decent player base so like for me this is going to be higher than i actually thought coming into it and I, i'm excited to play it again i i enjoyed this a lot I like that as we go back and play or start playing these games for the first time or go back and play them i do feel like oh it would be nice to hop into this every once in a while 
Um, the only one I don't feel that way is uh, ROE, just because there's not a player base. But the ones we've done so far, I definitely feel like I could hump in once, twice a month, maybe once a week for some of them. Uh, Kevin, do you have any final thoughts on the realm? On the realm? The realm royale. I mean, I've only played it today, and it was pretty fun because we got a win. And when yeah. I, when we get wins, that's you know makes it oh, even yeah. more fun. And that hammer that I had, oof, man, that hammer was awesome. I don't yeah, know. cool. I think I like the game. I think I might like it. I'm just saying right now, I might like it more than PUBG. Ooh, just saying. Let's find out on the rate on the rankings, baby. I'm just saying. All right. So. Our rankings as they stand and rank those battle royales is number one, Apex. Number two, PUBG. Number three, Super Animal Royale. Number four, Ring of Elysium. Where do we think this one will fall? Hmm. Shall I be the first vote? I'll be the I'll go sure. I'll go as tribute. I'll volunteer as tribute like uh sure. Katniss Everdeen. I'm gonna put this as number two. Now, there's a couple factors into this. That go into this. Now, I feel I, I don't want to redact it and I don't want to feel bad because he's going to rub it in my face, but I might have put PUBG a little too high because no. as of right now, I think I would play this more than PUBG. But when I look at the Battle Royale genre, I look at what we judged last week, putting PUBG over Super Animal Royale. This game is more fun than PUBG. It feels more like a true Battle Royale with all of the pieces in it. But if I was going on the fun factor, Super Animal Royale maybe should have gone up higher than PUBG. But right now, if we're going to keep these rankings and where I'm at, I might put this above PUBG at number two. System has, has screwed me. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I want it on the, the record. All right. you this whole system. list is now ruined. You know, you guys when we said, get to the end of the year, we can re you we'll get, do a re-rank episode. Putting PUBG above Super Animal want. Royale has destroyed this whole list <laughs> it has you know because like i i think sure for me for me destroyed. for me super animal royale is better than this game okay. pubg super is animal far royale? worse super animal royale is better than realm than than realm yeah huh. uh, i really do think so i think super animal royale is more polished it's everything about it is just it works you know what i mean um is it this game's Obviously better than PUBG. I'm obviously the lowest on PUBG, I think, in the group. Uh, so I guess, you know, for me, I've got to put it at number two as well. It's better than PUBG. But Super Animal Royale is just getting booted down this list, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So technically, if Super Animal Royale was number two... This would be number three. three. Huh. I would have Apex, Super Animal Royale... Realm Royale, PUBG, um, Ring PUBG and Ring of Elysium. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're like, we got a couple of twos here right now. Kevin, where you at? Uh, yeah, I think I'm at a two. Okay. Yeah, I'm at a two as well. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Unanimous yeah. number two right there. Put uh, it on the ranking. Hold on. Bunch of angles, what do you think? Oh, I think it's the number two, Kevin. I totally <laughs> agree with it. That's yeah. so much fun. What about you? I know I haven't been part of the podcast, but I really enjoyed it. Oh, what about you, Tito? We're falling apart. Yeah. Oh, right here, take out right here, getting married for the third week. Oh, oh man, I think it's yeah. a number one. Oh, mm -hmm. married. <laughs> this is the game where we just want to switch it up and play a battle royale, but not necessarily get sweaty in the war zone. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, I could see us going back to this for sure. It, for sure. It, I think one a part of that is because it's new to us and the novelty is still there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the bigger part of it is it's just so different. It's so radically different than anything we've ever played in this genre. So the, so. 100%. the reason for me too, I think this is better than Super Brandon Morale Watchburn, is because I feel like we have, a, we have a better chance at winning in these games than Animal Morale, because some of these, the Animal Morale games were tough. Oh, people get sweaty in Animal Morale. Yeah. That was and that's, tough. It's filled with half bots and we're still getting sweaty. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't know how to like, we play long. We play that game longer than any any other of these games. So these other games seem sure. easier to play than that game. So that's why that's why I thought that's why I think PUBG was better than Animal Royale. But 
and that's why oh, that's also why Realm was better than that too. But yeah, it's still a fun game though. I'm with you on that's, that. It's a really yeah, fun game. Yeah. You see, it's I'm just so I'm I'm nervous because we're gonna be playing a lot of battle royales that are better than PUBG, but not better than Super Animal Royale. And so, for me to, and so for me to watch Super Animal Royale just fall down this list into last place, it, it just kills me, man. No, it, just, it, it hurts my it, soul. It's hurting him, but you know what? We have a long way to go, and I think Super Animal Royale is going to fall right where it belongs, right in that mid to high tier. And that's where this is going to stay. That's where it's going to be, because I believe it's a great game. But like when we talk about Battle Royales, we're going to see a lot of them here throughout this podcast. But like, there's a lot that goes into it, and I think... I think Super Animal Royale, it will be a mid to high tier one, and that's where it's going to end. That's where it's going to end. There's going to be things below it soon enough. I think yeah, I think that's going to be top 10. I think it's going to stay top 10. I'm just saying that right now. So, Yeah, it like might be right. It'll be top 10, top 10. All right, so the rankings as of this moment are at number five, Ring of Elysium. At number four, Super Animal Royale. At number three, PUBG. At number two, Realm Royale. And at number one, the apex legends yes i i feel like it, it would be a fun idea to like one day when we get tegato back in here you know after he's been married about 15 more times uh we can and we've played a bunch more games we can do the re-rankening and just re-rank all these games maybe for an episode but Have our own our list needs lists. to be longer before that happens yeah, yeah we could show watch our own list for the end and yeah. coming next week Oh boy, I'm excited. It's so dumb, but it's so great. It's so not polished, but it's still a lot of fun. Cuisine Royale is what we will be playing next week. Kevin, how excited are you? Dude, we're going to be cooking up a win for sure. You know what I'm saying, you guys? <laughs> cuisine. Right, do you know what you're saying? Because it's Cuisine Royale. Yes, yes. yes. Thank Anyone? you for that great joke Anyone? yeah i've only played this once and i've watched you guys play it a handful of times so i'm excited to we gotta win to try this yeah. out with you guys because you probably know what you're doing a little bit more than i do it looks I, absolutely ridiculous this is, i can't wait to rank <laughs> this one let's, let's just say that i don't have my yeah. camera on but i have a small on ear to ear i cannot wait to rank this one best friends get ready for this this is easily the most bonkers game we will have played so far. <laughs> yeah, That's we'll for sure. We're, and we're uh, playing on PC, right? To, to we're yeah. playing on whatever console we want. Don't worry about it. We'll play it. All right. Uh, so we have Washburn. Washburn, you can find him at twitch.tv slash Washburn135. Any final words, Washburn? Uh, I'm excited to play Cuisine this week. And Super Animal Royale is ranked too low. Got it. You have a lot of opinions. We know that for a fact. A lot of wrong ones, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Kevin Asex of twitch.tv slash Kevin Asex. Kevin, any final words for the people? I, I should have said this earlier too. We we might talk about Hyperscape and what they added next oh, week. Yeah, too. For next week? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll definitely guess, do that. Yeah. yeah. As it has gone into beta as of an hour and a half ago or so. And finally, rounding out the crew for this week, twitch.tv slash snowbike mic. Any final words to the people? I am really happy I joined the podcast today with you guys. You always make it fun and exciting. And uh, here's to an incredible week ahead. Everybody out there listening, I hope you all are having fun. I hope you are staying safe, staying healthy. And man, oh, man. Do we have a big week ahead? Future spoilers sure. coming at it's you. Tell us what's going on, Mike. Tell us what's going it's on. It's a week. banger of a week. It's a banger sure. of the week. That's all they That's need all to you know. Need know. That's all you, on, you need to know. Something. Give me something. Now. I'm hungry now. Post the pod, Kevin. We love you, kid. Let's get Until it out of here. Until next week, calms out. <laughs>